Hey, Story fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into today's mailbag video. Yes, it is the weekend. We're going to jump in on all of your Steeler related questions. As a lot of you new subscribers are submitting questions, if you want to get in on next week's show, go down below, use the hashtag Steelers, ask away. Be sure to be subscribed as well. And more than likely, I mean, I pulled a lot of new subscriber questions. So if you ask a question down below here, Odds of you being featured on our show, like these guys are in a couple of minutes, are going to be pretty good. So go down below and give me a hashtag Steelers question. Eric is first. He says, how good can the new offensive line be, improved or not? Um, if you go outside Pittsburgh, they're going to tell you it's going to be bad this year. If you look inside at training camp, I mean, so far, so good. And I think that Pittsburgh's offensive line is going to grow as the preseason progresses, but I think they're going to be pretty good. Now, I mentioned outside, I mean, in terms of the national media, they're not very high on the Steeler defense, sorry, offensive line. They have them as the second worst. The Giants are the worst. They're 32, 32nd overall. The uh, Steelers are 31st, then Carolina, then the Miami Dolphins. So, you know, it's kind of like take it as you will. The national media looks at the new offensive line and they say, okay, what was once a feature group for the Pittsburgh Steelers for years, I mean, with the Pouncey being, I mean, like literally, they used to be or had been the gold standard. Like the Steelers offensive line, never an issue. They're great. Move on. Well, they have all these changes. You have rookies at center. You have, you know, Dotson at left guard. You have Turner and Banner. Like this is going to be a patchwork, according to the national media, offensive line. Now, these are all good players. And I feel like the Steelers offensive line is going to be good this year. Will it be, you know, the third best offensive line, the eighth best off, uh, offensive line? No. But the 31st best offensive line, I don't think Mike Tomlin's going to let that happen. I think they're going to be improved. But when I say improved, improve from where they were last year and improve from where the national media thinks that they're going to be. But they're not going to be as good as the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line of old, as in like a couple of years ago, because they had some actual pro bowlers and really good players on that roster. People think the offensive line is the biggest worry for the Steelers this year. What's yours? Like if you were sitting back and you're saying, Thomas, my one biggest worry for the Steelers this year is... What? Let me know what it is down below right now in the comment section. O-line, I mean, makes sense. I mean, I understand. The O-line's not going to be fantastic, but I think they're going to be bad this year. So give me your thoughts on biggest worry for the Steelers, though, down below right now. Uh, Epic Adam says, who should the number one wideout in Pittsburgh be? Um, you know... I guess Juju. Like, I mean, if you want to give me just, like, who should be the number one wide receiver, I would say Juju Smith-Schuster. But at the same time, you know, I think Chase Claypool's going to have a good year. And Chase Claypool talked about 14 touchdowns this year. Like, he was interviewed and said, what's your goal? And he said 14, which is insane. If you have 14 touchdowns, you're going to, like, lead the league in touchdown catches. So, listen, they have a bunch of good players. And they have a bunch of good wide receivers. It's one place where they are not going to be struggling at. They've invested a lot in the wide receiver position in the draft for the past couple of years. But if you want to know who should be number one, it should be Juju. And Juju should come back on this one-year deal, ball out, then get a massive contract contract extension and stay in Pittsburgh for the foreseeable future. Like, that's what should happen here. Now, Juju had the distraction last year, although the TikTok garbage of the national media blew up to be more than it actually was and the dancing before the game. I don't know if it actually affected his play on the field. I think he just had kind of an up-and-down moment and was a little more down to the latter half of the year, kind of like Chase Claypool, who balled out early on. Remember the Philadelphia Eagle game? Early in the season, whatever week that was, he was, I mean, torching people. I think they need a little more consistency, but Juju should be the number one receiver, and that's, uh, I think that's, that's pretty obvious overall. Zach says, uh, why does no one ever mention Deontay Johnson, potential number one receiver this year? Uh, I mean, that's a good point. I didn't mention him during the last question. Listen, uh, Johnson has to improve, and he has to improve in being, you know, productive and not dropping the football. I mean, Deontay Johnson has had a problem with drops, and you don't have to be a diehard, watch every single snap Steeler fan to understand that. I think Johnson needs to, again, just grow, just grow up a little bit. He's still a young receiver. He's playing alongside young receivers, but they're better than him. I think he can earn a lot more playing time this year if he just gets the consistency down. A couple of drops will get in your head, especially early on in the year, and then boom, you're playing a lot less, and you're dropping more passes and just kind of snowballs into a, a very unproductive year overall. And so I think that the Deontay Johnson can be mentioned as a one. You, you can't just instantly give him that because you have Juju and you have Chase, Chase Claypool. But with consistent production, I think Johnson can go ahead and emerge as a really good player this year. And I'm pumped. He's one of the guys I'm really looking forward to watching this year, not just in uh, you know week one, week two, but later on in the NFL season. He's had a pretty decent training camp. Drops continue to be an issue. But if he fixes that, which you know, it's a big if. I think that they can be looking pretty darn good, and the wide receiver group is good regardless. And I didn't mention him earlier on because you have, like I said, Juju and Chase Claypool, but I think Johnson has a chance to be really good this year as well. Okay, we have a chance to get to 4,000 subscribers here on the channel with your help. So if you're brand new, like the channel, which a lot of you guys do, and we appreciate that, go down below and hit that subscribe button. If you're on the fence, I mean, you don't pay anything. You just hit the subscribe button, and then you watch our content, which is what the subscribe button is for anyway. So go ahead and subscribe. Help us go ahead and get to 4K. Austin asked the question, um, let's see here. Austin says, uh, who do you think is a realistic, or what do you think is a realistic draft strategy for the Steelers next year? I'd imagine Steelers won't have a hype, a hype 
draft pick, so the early quarterbacks will be gone. I personally think we should go either corner or offensive tackle in the first round, and then take a guy like Matt Corral in the, or Coral, is it Coral Corral? I always forget how to say his last name, uh, in the second. Um, oof. Boy, I love talking draft. You guys know that. Um, I, listen, the Steelers draft depends on Big Ben. And the Steelers' number one draft pick, their first round draft pick, depends on Big Ben. And it depends on it in a couple of ways, right? Not only does it depend on whether he comes back or not, because if he doesn't come back, then you will draft a quarterback or you'll go, you know, trade for one or sign one, but most likely draft a quarterback. But if he also struggles, then you have a higher chance of drafting a quarterback higher on in the NFL draft in the top 10. If he is really great this year and he still retires, you still can draft a quarterback, but you'll be, like he said, in the middle of the first round or hopefully the latter part of the first round based on win production here in 2021. I think if Ben retires, you got to go quarterback in the first round. I mean, honestly, like, unless you truly believe that Dwayne Haskins or Mason Rudolph can hold down the fort, then you got to take a quarterback early. You got to go get the Spencer Rattlers of the world or the uh, uh, Sam Howells of the world or, or, you know, insert your quarterback who you really like early on in the, in the first round. But if Big Ben wants to come back, or if you truly believe in Dwayne Haskins or, or or Mason Rudolph, then go in a later round. You know, you get a second round draft pick, a third round draft pick, whatever you want to do, you can go ahead and get one of these guys who are a little bit later on, I should say, uh, in the NFL draft. And so even though I do think that Big Ben is going to retire, I do think that they need to go ahead and address the quarterback spot at some point in the draft this following year. You mentioned offensive line. I think that you can make a real case for taking a cornerback or an offensive lineman early on. Like if Big Ben, let's say Big Ben plays really well. Right, so let's go crazy scenario one. Big Ben dominates. He, you know, wins the division and he, you know, goes to the AC title game and he meets with the media afterward and says, hey, you know, uh, I, I think we can do it one more year. And they bring him back for one more year. Then, yeah, you could go ahead and get a quarterback in round two or three who learns one year under Big Ben and then is the heir apparent and then spend your first round draft pick on offensive lineman or cornerback or, you know, insert Steelers' biggest need after this year here, right? So I think that they probably will end up taking a quarterback. It could be earlier on because I just don't think Ben's going to be here after this season. Season, but again, we'll have to go ahead and wait and see. Give me your thoughts on this. Where will the Steelers be picking in 2022? Like, I know I know that we're just about to, you know, get underway with the regular season. We're a couple of weeks away from the start. And it's 2021, right? But we can still look, look ahead. And 2021 impacts what happens in 2022. Give me your thoughts on where the Steelers will be picking uh, in the first round. It's kind of your answer to how good the Steelers are going to be. If they're in the top 10, then it's a bad year. If they're 11 through 18, they miss the playoffs. If they're 19 through 32, then they're a playoff team and they're pretty good. I think that's how the math works. Either way, give me your thoughts on that down below right now. Um, okay, we'll go and jump into another one here. EYDB, Edba, Ed, 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 I don't know how to say your name. Uh, do, do G, sorry, I'm butchering this. D-U-S-J. Either way, you say, what do you think about Najee Harris? Possible running, uh, rushing champ. I think he's thinking about the rushing champ here. Um... I mean, I love Najee Harris. I think Najee Harris is going to be great, and he's going to play, you know, in the remaining three preseason games, and hopefully he's going to get enough reps and stay healthy at the exact same time. you got to load manage that a little bit, but rushing champ is a possibility. Now, there are a lot of great running backs, and so the odds of him being the number one rushing running back this year, I'm not going to say are, you know, fantastic, but I think he could be easily be a 1,000-yard running back, and that's all Pittsburgh really needs him to be. Like, maybe a 1,000-yard running back will take you a very, very long way. Now, in terms of the rookie running backs, we're going to talk about how good he's going to be compared to these guys. I think he's the best rookie running back, and it was clearly uh, whenever they drafted him in the first, <coughs> excuse me, whenever they took him uh, with the, 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 to make it the first running back in the draft, right? It was Harris first, then Travis Etienne, and then I believe it was Javante Williams, then Michael Carter, then Kenny Gainwell. I think that's, that, that, that's how it went. It's on your screen, no particular order. But, you know, is Travis Etienne going to have a better year? alongside a rookie quarterback, then Najee Harris? I mean, I, I, I don't think so. Javante Williams is going to be competing against other running backs. Denver kind of has a running back by committee. Michael Carter is a Jet, and so the odds of the Jets have a good running attack is going to be, you know, not that great. And then, of course, you finish on a guy like Kenny Gainwell, who is uh, an exciting back in Philadelphia, but they got, you know, Miles Sanders, and they got Boston Scott, they got all these, these different guys. So maybe not rushing champ, but probably 1,000-yard rusher and rookie rushing champ. How rookie rushing champ, maybe an offensive rookie of the year, are both possibilities uh, for Harris. But I'm excited. I think Harris is going to have a great rookie year. I I, I think back to Zeke Elliott's rookie year. I think they did different players, but Zeke was Zeke was really special his rookie year, and he really gave Dallas a boost whenever they drafted him. Now, they took him in the top 10, Harris taking 24th overall, but still, I'm excited. I mean, I'm, uh, the, the question is, what do you think about him? I'm pumped about Najee Harris. I think you guys are, too, and most Steelers fans are overall. All right, ultimate word of day here on our Pittsburgh Steelers mailbag video. We're going to do this every single week. So if you didn't get your question answered, I can only pull so many in a 10-minute video, go down below and ask again or ask a new one in the comments section using the hashtag Steelers. And more likely than that, I'll probably pull it 
for the upcoming mailbag video next week. So just make sure you guys go down below. Use the hashtag sewers because it helps me be able to find the questions because not all of the answers are questions, you know what I'm saying? So do that. And then make sure you guys, again, are subscribed to the channel because our subscribers are the ones who get the preference on uh, the mailbag videos. So go down below and subscribe and help us grow. All time for today here on our Pittsburgh Steelers Talk mailbag video. I'm your host, Thomas Mott. Enjoy the weekend as we sign off the rest of your day.